Good evening, everyone. Uh, as you can see, I have um, uh, no gavel in front of me, so I'm not going to gavel to start the meeting. This is not a meeting. This is a public forum. So I just want to let everyone uh, at home and here tonight uh, know, let them know that this is a forum. We are here tonight to listen to people here and at home in regards to um, a, uh, you know, the proposed um, single strand plastic bag by law. So before we get started, I just wanted to thank everybody here now and at home that might be listening and watching um, and get over a few uh, housekeeping things. So mind me for a moment. So I have to read some uh, things in front of me. So I just want to let everyone know that on uh, July 13th, the following notice was advertised in the Pembroke Manor. A notice is hereby given to the Pembroke Board of Health will sponsor a public forum on Monday, July 16th, today, at 6 p.m. in the Veterans Hall. Here, public comment and opinion on the topic of presenting an article in the fall town meeting to amend the town of Pembroke's bylaw to add a section whose purpose is to ban single-use plastic bags in the town of Pembroke. So. Having said that, I just want to thank everybody for coming tonight and let them know, just give them a little background here that, you know, the Board of Health represents the residents here in town. And we are charged, you know, you have put us in charge of basically making decisions regarding public health and sanitary issues. That's what you elected us for, and that's what we hope to work on with you. So. The Board of Health has been uh, asked by a coalition, that's the reason for this forum, um, to, and some residents to, you know, uh, help assist, if they asked our assistance to possibly sponsor a bylaw at the Pembroke Town Meeting for the, pro uh, for the proposed submission of this article for that said town meeting. Um, the goal of this forum, just to let everybody know, is you know, basically to gauge how the public feels about this matter and see what the interests in regards to an article which would be up for discussion at town meeting, not by the Board of Health. It, it is not to weigh, the, it's basically for us to weigh the pros and cons to decide if, as a board, if we could, could sponsor an article to help this citizens group that came before us and put it on the fall town meeting for debate by the town, by the representatives, by everyone in town meeting at that particular meeting in the fall. So we understand that the subject of this is widely uh, contested by lots of residents. And the Board of Health is here tonight basically to determine, you know, whether the public interest, you know, in Pembroke and regarding this whole um, single strand bags could be a subject for debate at that particular town meeting. So having said that, this is a forum for us to listen. We are not deciding to ban plastic bags here tonight, or we are not saying we're in favor or against. We are here to listen. That is why my job as chairman, I called this forum, and we as a board hope to listen to whatever your concerns or pro the pros and cons are. So, having gotten that housekeeping out of the way, um, that's why we're here right now. The other housekeeping thing I have for everybody here tonight is basically to let them know, if anyone here wants to speak, please come up to the microphone and um, speak clearly, state your name and address for the record so that we uh, can properly record this. Uh, anyone at the podium is, uh, you know, will be recognized. Comments, you know, from the audience will be, you know, anyone here will be able to speak. That's why we're here. We will listen as long as it takes. Uh, I ask everybody if they could keep their comments to five minutes, uh, what they have. It would be appreciated, but we will not shut you down. But if, it, if we get more and more people saying the same thing, I will ask somebody else um, to step up. Uh, that way people can be heard. So these are basic housekeeping articles for everybody here. And um, everyone is 
at home watching is welcome to come down and speak as well. So, uh, there will be no deliberation, again, by this board this evening, tonight, at all in regards to this matter as far as uh, whether we decide to put it on the warrant or not. So I just wanted everyone to know that again. So I, you know, I have to reiterate that because I'd like everyone to be heard tonight and we're just trying to see how uh, it's not our job. It's, I believe it's the, we believe it's the, um, it's such a hot topic in many towns around now, uh, around us that it should be up to the people. So, having done that, I think it would make the most sense for, uh, you know, anyone will be recognized, you know, raise their hand and I will ask them to come to the podium. But I think due to the fact that the brochure that you have in front of you that was put forth before our committee um, about three to four weeks ago uh, by Mr. Sullivan, I think we should have him uh, come to the podium first to explain and get the meeting, uh, get this forum uh, on its way. And just as a note, just to let you know before you come to the podium that um, that this, obviously people are watching at home, but I don't, I think I left out of my housekeeping that, uh, you know, just be advised that this meeting is on uh, channel 15 and will be broad, broadcast and is being recorded for airing of the, you know, the different channels so that Whatever you say will be recorded in our, you know, in the minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming out to uh, discuss this important matter. Um, I know it's a tough time of year with summer and all that. It's hard to get uh, many folks out, but uh, we're glad to see the faces that have made it here today. I, I would probably rebut your statement that this is a highly contentious issue because to me there seems to be overwhelming support. Everything I've read and seen about it, I really have trouble seeing, seeing enough pros on the other side for, for saving single-use plastic bags. So um, I really, you know, I'm, I'm open to hear anybody's um, take on what purpose they serve or what good they serve that could outweigh the detriments that they, um, they have on our environment. I mean, there's a couple, there's a handout that was provided to the Board of Health, and uh, we've got copies here. I think there's 25. If anybody didn't get one, be glad to get a copy to you. We have extras. I mean, there's just a few bullet points in there. I want to hear what other people have to say tonight. I'm just going to highlight, you know, some of the more staggering statistics that are out there on single, you know, use plastic. Um, you know, they have a life expectancy of over a thousand years. You know, Everybody sees, sees them blowing around the high, you know, the fact that they're not recyclable. It'd be one thing if you could put them in your recycling bin at the end of your driveway. I think a lot of people, you know, Pembroke has a, and here's our, here's our strong advocate, Samantha Woods, to help us out. But um, in any event, um, you know, if they were recyclable, it would be a whole different matter. But the fact is that they're not. They really, there's no life for them after their single use. And, they, you know, they're used... They're used for 12 minutes, and they last in the environment for over 1,000 years. And, you know, I think it's really just a matter of habit forming. It's a great experiment for me. I've been using plastic bags all my life, but, you know, now we have these nice designer bags, Yellowstone National Park. I don't know. I'd, I'd match my bags up against yours. But um, in any event, you know, they're durable. They're great. I stuff them in my car. I have two or three. They can hold so much more. You know, if you can carry a 50-pound bag, it can handle it. So it's nice. I mean, I'd had, I've had a dozen plastic bags for what I can fit in one of these. So, you know, it's habit changing. I think that's a challenge for some people. The plastic bags are super convenient. I get it. But, you know, the world is full of plastic. And um, I alluded to this once before. i got to try and not run on here. But a friend of ours produced a movie called The Plastic Ocean. He spent, is it, he's out of Hong Kong. He's a movie producer. And he spent seven years traveling the globe studying plastic in the oceans. And it's horrifying. And I think a lot of people have seen these, these you know, s bits and pieces of these stories. But you know, it's it's really staggering. Um, just I think it's irrefutable at this point just how bad plastic is for the environment. And anything small steps we can do towards eliminating it makes sense. And another thing here too is you know we're not 
asking Pembroke to be a guinea pig here. There's 70 towns out of 350 towns in Massachusetts have adopted similar bylaws. 81, we're up to 81. They're, you know, does Pembroke want to be the last one? Because it is going to happen statewide. It'll be 350 towns in, in short order. And do we want to be a follower and be the last one on board? I mean, just the fact that they, so many towns, this is steamrolling across the state, so many towns are doing it is reason enough to have serious consideration to it. Now, the bylaw, we have a sample bylaw. We've been looking at other towns' bylaws. I mean, certainly that's welcome for open debate. Maybe they need to be tweaked a little bit. You know, maybe there's things that are specific to Pembroke that we might want to put in there that Marshfield didn't. But to me, that's just the small print. The fact that, you know, the important thing is to get the bylaw this fall. We really hope to get it on with the support of the Board of Health, we hope, to get this bylaw up for the citizens of the town to vote on. But um, I'm not going to ramble on. There's some very interesting facts in that handout. Um, you know, the, the information's there, very irrefutable that the plastic bags really serve no purpose that would outweigh what they're doing to our environment. And I would go so far as to say, you know, as soon as we get this bylaw in place, I hope we're going to be going after straws. And styrofoam cups are a really bad problem in our environment today. And, you know, you see the Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts, they're paying attention to this. Starbucks, I believe, banned straws, did they not? So, you know, it's, um, people are, people are um, starting to clue into this. And uh, the big retailers, and McDonald's, I think, what did, uh, they just did something significant. Um, I think they ban, they're banning the straws and, and, um, in other areas. So I'm going to let other people speak their mind, but I, uh, I was happy to help facilitate this with some other uh, people that are very passionate about it in the town. I would want to bring attention to Stephanie here. She uh, kind of got me going on it as well. And Samantha Woods from the Watershed Association has been a great supporter in uh, providing information for us. So certainly welcome to hear uh, them fill in any blanks that I may have missed. But um, just hope to gain, get everybody's support behind this. We can get the bylaw in place for this fall and um, let the citizens vote and hopefully take a step in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the way, I mean, as I said at the beginning, we will allow anyone to speak, but I think it would make sense if, you know, when people come up to speak, and, you know, we probably, I can't say how many are for or against at this meeting, but I, I would like to go on the opposite to see that if anyone has anything against what he just said uh, that would like to speak here, they're more than welcome. Uh, I don't know. So if anyone would like to, they could, they're welcome to step up to them. I, Steve, is it Steve? Yep, yeah, you can step right up. Steve, before you address the group, I'd just like to add another company, Mr. Sullivan, Norwegian Cruise Lines, also banned straws from all of their cruise ships. And add that to your... If we were at the National Seashore yesterday, no straws, paper straws. They didn't last through the entire drink. They're not going to show up in the ocean. Uh, okay. Just as we said, yeah, we I do know you, but you want to stay Steve here. Curley, to Greenwood Ave. Okay. Um, you know, it's a, I'm not going to speak in terms of some of the issues that are here. It's a couple of things. It's uh, number one, um, when you're talking about these things being in landfills for a thousand years, obviously uh, the town of Pembroke does not use a landfill. Plastic bag lasts about as long as a paper bag and an incinerator. Um, and most of the towns around here do as well. So if it is actually properly disposed of in the trash, it's, it's gone rather quickly. I, I understand that some people, you know, they, they bring a bag into the beach or something. Uh, secondly, I, you know, as somebody who does reuse these plastic bags to line garbage cans in the house, etc., um, I'm one of the people that's going to end up now having to go out and buy plastic bags for that use. Um, and so to me, it's like a, you're adding a tax to me for, for this. Um, there was also a nice piece that was in the ledger not too long ago that uh, mentioned that um, the towns that have banned plastic bags and have actually looked at the uh, tonnage over the next few years have found uh, zero impact in the tonnage in the solid waste stream. 
which they attest to people actually going out and buying plastic bags uh, at the store to replace the usage that they had at home of these. So just a couple points there. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone want to speak in favor? Step right up. Okay. <laughs> so as I was saying, this is exactly. just the last two days worth of well, I do, um, Oh yeah, my name is Pam yeah. DeMosell and I live okay. at Nine Gurney Drive. Thank you. I'm sorry. I've got Good my job. I'm totally into it. Yes. Okay. Good job. Um, and this is the, the the newspaper as well, you know, comes with bags. Um, I love my bags. I the I actually was at the stop and shop the other day and said to the lady, Can I leave my carriage here? I have to go get my bags. Okay, because I believe I wanted those bags. And I hate it when the kids put, God love them, one thing in one bag and one thing in the next bag. And you end up with five more bags than you needed. Surgical Center gave me a bag. How do you like that? Grocery stores, Yorktown, souvenir, guiding eyes for the blind, Shaw's, and Stop and Shop. You can get them anywhere, everywhere. They're not expensive. Um, the impact on the environment, yeah, we send it off and we incinerate it, but that's not the one I think Steve, you know, exceeded to the fact that that's, they're not all ending up there. They're ending up and we, and we can see them as they waft by the, the highway. Um, this is something that um, we need to look at. I think that it's important for our environment and I have strong feelings about it. Okay. <laughs> now I, I have a question for you though. If you um, you you spoke, if you feel strongly, would if, if there was an article, you know, would you uh, on town? Would you be at town meeting arguing like you are here tonight in favor of? It? Well, that's always an issue of all of us. Yeah. Ourselves to right. We definitely would vote, which I do. Because um, you know some of the uh, the important thing to recognize here tonight is, and that's why we're here to listen, is even if we were to you know support a, an article, um, and it, it but it will be up for debate at that said town meeting, and people the debate needs to go both ways, and that's what we're hoping to hear t tonight because. That's an important thing just to remember, and I just wanted to, you know, let you know. Otherwise, we have all sorts of good plans here. Exactly. And when we don't do anything in this town meeting, we Certainly. have to hold on. Yeah. Okay. Next, anyone? Sure. Come on up. Hi, folks. Dan Fabuco, 161 Elm Street. Uh, I really appreciate what, what you guys are doing here is... First step, information for the public, begin the debate, and secondly, bring it up, bring it up for a vote at town meeting. Let the people decide. That's, uh, it's, that's the way to do it rather than one board of three people making a decision. Uh, let the townspeople um, have their voice heard. So having said that, uh, I am against a plastic bag ban. And there are folks in town who are against a plastic bag, bag ban that... Um, don't feel comfortable coming up to a meeting because there's strong people, there are people who are in favor of bans who feel very strongly. Uh, so the folks that are against it uh, fear being ostracized for having an opposing view. Uh, I don't fear that, so I'm here tonight. Uh, so I just wanted to, wanted to let the people know that, uh, especially if you're in favor for it, that you, a lot of people that are in favor of it, uh, very have a fervor for it. Uh, but do know that, that they're there's an opposing view out there. Um, uh, some people can debate the science. We'll let that all happen at, at town meeting floor. Uh, I just wanted to get the word out that not everyone is rolling in the same direction on this. I'd like to know how you get a tan like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next. Feel free. Hi. 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 Um, Stephanie mm -hmm. Hagen, I'm at 97 Dwelly Street. Okay. Um, I am in favor for the ban. Um, I have a few points to make regarding the arguments that were made against it. Um, regarding the incinerator, yes, our trash does go to the incinerator. However, 
when the trash is incinerated, it turns into microplastics that's then released into our environment and the fish, and where we are directly related to the herring and rivers in our town that run through, we are like individually impacting them. Um, I actually took this picture on the way here at the herring run um, next to the um, trash barrel. And do you want to see it? Yeah. Word of hell. Should probably see this. It was horrendous. There was at least six or seven plastic bags directly next to a river that supports an entire ecosystem. And we are part of the problem. Hemrope is part of the problem. Um, and like Andrew said, um, or you said 81 towns of 360 towns have already passed this ban. And once it gets to 170 towns, it's very, very, very likely, nearly 100% likely that it'll go to a statewide vote. So what that means is we will have to comply at that point. If we can be proactive and start to put this process into place, we have the power to encourage our small business owners to comply before they get fined by the state. Who knows what the size of those fines will be and how it will affect them. So in turn, we're actually protecting our small business owners. And additionally, regarding the tonnage, yes, the tonnage might not be an issue. However, we are paying for the cost of these plastic bags in our trash bills because it all comes back to us that every 30 minutes, the recycling has to be shut down and the um, machines have to be completely cleared because of the amount of plastic bags going into our single stream rec recycling. So we're paying for that. Um, who knows what the reduction in the cost would be? I have no idea. But I imagine it would be significant if they were able to run the machines consistently throughout the day if people weren't putting plastic bags in the single stream. Um, I have a number of other points I could make, but I'm not going to waste everyone's well, time. No, it's not a waste. I mean, but <laughs> you can make a few more bullet um, points if you like. You know, and regarding feeling as though it's a tax because you have to go out and pay for your own plastic bags to use for your trash, um, I was at Home Goods three days ago, and there are semi-compostable plastic bags um, that are 300 small trash liner plastic bags available for $5. So if you broke that down weekly or monthly, you're looking at something regarding 25 cents a month. So I hardly feel that that's a tax, um, but that's my opinion. Um, I think that's good for me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Sure. Come on up. Amy McHugh, 289 Madikisic. Okay. Um, I'm in favor of the ban. And just to uh, elaborate a little bit more on what everybody else said with a couple of things. Um, when you were talking about the uh, problems having to stop every 30 seconds, uh, 30 minutes. Um, they can't be, so you people know, they can't be recycled because uh, the, the, the bags are so light that they get sucked in uh, into the reclamation machines, and that's what clogs the gears, and that's what they have to stop. I mean, it's like a legit thing. It actually shuts down the machines, and she's right. That costs us in the end. Um, we want to also give you a few more um, pieces of information. Um, most of Australia has banned these bags. That's been happening now for years. Australia saw an 80% reduction after implementing 15%, uh, 15 cents per bag. Ireland, 15 cents. They saw a 90% reduction in 2002. Also the UK, they charged 8 cents for recycled bags and 85% uh, reduction in 2015. We're sort of behind the ball on that. So now, when you do this type of um, research, That's where do you find for people at home? Where do you look? Boston up Globe. This type and of and that was specifically from Wired magazine. It was. Yes. Okay. Just so in case people yeah. might want to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and um, I'm fairly new to Pembroke. I come from California, where uh, LA also saw a massive reduction, 95%, in use of um, plastic bags. So I'm all for it. Uh, some things that we had done in California uh, to uh, 
sort of help understand that we need to do this and educate people. There's a lot of different things that we can do. I don't want you to think that we can't do stuff to make the people aware uh, that there's easier things that, that every person can do, such as education. We can do things like encourage the retailers uh, to use the bags that all of you have. That's free advertising for that place. Free advertising. We all have them on the Whole Foods, things like that. I mean, come on. You, you know, we have to be a little bit progressive because, like she said, this is going to happen, guys. It is coming. It's happened. It's, it's already uh, has a budget passed through the le legislature, which, if I can quote this real quick. As of 6 10 16, Mass State Senate passed a measure that would ban plastic bags from being dispensed by retailers and require a charge of 10 cents or more for a recycled paper or reusable bag. So that is still has to go up to the legislature, and it'll happen after we get over the 100 um, towns and cities. Um, I also want to mention, I want to elaborate on the, uh, someone had said about the bags that they saw at Home Goods. I use bags from Whole Foods, same thing. Fully biodegradable. I use them for every trash bag in my house. Fully biodegradable. They're out there. They're not that expensive, honestly. Yes, sometimes I do have to use two. Sometimes they are. They can leak. I use two. I have no problem. It's still the money is still pennies, pennies, absolute pennies. Um, also, uh, for the gentleman who was against, he said that he uses, and a lot of other people sort of use them as liners for bins and uh, animals. They use them for things like that. Newspapers, guys, it uses the same thing. Even the sort of, uh, I don't know the actual term, but the sort of pee pads that we use. You put one or put one uh, plastic bag or trash bag down, and then you put the newspapers on top of it. It's the same thing. You guys can use them over and over again. Flyers that come in the mail, we throw them away. Use those as bin liners. Put those at the bottom in case you have anything that leaks. Um, uh, I have a doorknob that, uh, a little do not disturb sort of looking do do thing you put on your doorknob that says don't forget your bag. Every time I finish using my recyclable bag, I put it on my doorknob to go outside. Every single time I go to my car, I remember it. There are ways to educate. Which is in the car. That's yeah. why I have so many of them. But if I bring them in, I sometimes I'll forget. I'll put it right on the knob as soon as I'm done with it. Um, and you know, we can also bring children involved, get the children involved, educating at a small, at a younger level which they're already into doing. You know, you see it all the time. Um, and I also want to sort of mention uh, in this wonderful packet, I didn't see much of the use of the term biodegradable. Um, and it's hand in hand, you know, recyclable, reusable. But biodegradable is also an option. Those are the kind of trash bags I use, fully biodegradable. Um, again, it's just another step of availability and the type of things that I'd like to see happen. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Feel free. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown. Mr. Chairman. Actually, I'll give you guys one of these so I got it. Thank you. Right. My name is John Brown, 181 Old Washington Street. Uh, the reason why I am here today is, well, personally, yes, I am for the plastic bag ban because of reusable bags that we're using already, but also giving you information that I have here is by hearing this coming down the road probably a couple months ago, uh, I started actually looking at other options for small business or for the consumer itself. So I went to this one company down in Florida. Uh, the owner is Jim Geiger, and it's uh, shoppingbagsfree.com. Now, these bags themselves, like I said, they're regular bags. Uh, he'll, sorry about that. <laughs> that has the company's name above, and then basically the national advertising that pays for the bags themselves. This company actually gives free bags to mom and pop shops and or the corporate entities themselves. Because usually when corporate entities say, okay, great, we're doing something here, we're going to pay for more of these bags, they put a tax on us with our food or whatever to actually have these. They, this company will give them free to these companies as long as they let them nationally advertise, Coke, Pepsi, and there's a lot of great information on this website. Uh, said, so I'm here more of as an advocate to help out the consumer so we're not added on to our bills and also to the mom and pop shops that be able to buy the cheaper bags, yes, because it's plastic and it probably is cheaper, but these given by this company or at least other companies that might be doing this also 
could help out the mom and pop shops so they don't have to worry about putting it on the consumer also by raising prices. Right. So, and the question I have, and because you're on the board of selectmen and for people at home as well to understand, when there's a bylaw, say they debate, it goes up for debate and it gets past the town meeting, um, and you, you heard about, you know, possibly the businesses will be, it's like taxing the consumer or even the businesses. Uh, does it become mandated so that the businesses lose in town? You know, we have a few stop and shops in town. Does that mean if they were the buy, if the bag, uh, you know, this passed, that the stop and shop would be have? To, well, obviously Plymouth switched over and they had to. You know, there's a Walmart and there's all, you know, uh, brown bags now. So does that mean businesses lose out of this and it hurts businesses? Well, it, I mean, it, it can, but also on top, that's up to the business themselves if they want to do that. But mostly, I've seen other corporate entities do that uh, in other states, where they're like, "Okay, we're going to only use certain bags, mm -hmm. so we're going to charge the consumer a couple, like three to five cents extra." Okay. And sometimes three to five cents, it depends what kind, what your family is like, uh, could hurt you in the end, you know, monthly or whatever. Sure. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Can we keep this, Mr. Brown? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Come on up. Yeah. Hello, my name is Cody Pajic. I live at 286 Pleasant Street, and I'm speaking in favor of the bag ban today. So when we talk about um, disposable plastic bags, we tend to focus only on the middle of their life. Uh, but you can really chunk up the life of a plastic bag into five stages. Production, transportation, consumption, which is what we tend to focus on, um, recycling, and then disposal. And so I just want to briefly touch on those other four stages and talk about how plastic, ba uh, plastic bags negatively impact our world in each of those stages. So, uh, and by the way, at a previous, the reason why I'm kind of bringing it up this way, at a previous Board of Health meeting, one of the Board of Health members had said the problem isn't with plastic bags themselves, it's with the way that we dispose of them. And I think that was a bit misguided, and I, you know, this is kind of the reason why. So first in the production stage, uh, plastic bags obviously are made out of oil. Uh, some estimations I found from the EPA said that about 12 million barrels of oil go into producing plastic bags for the U.S. nationwide each year, and that number is going up each year. To harvest the, that oil, uh, indigenous communities in the global south are being basically destroyed and forced into homelessness and poverty uh, rapidly, again, more and more every day. We're clear-cutting habitats that have survived for millions of years untouched by humans that now we're completely getting rid of. Uh, we're disrupting wildlife migration patterns. We're interrupting the mating calls of birds. We're fracking in the deep ocean to the point where whales can no longer communicate to their young because it's just too loud. Uh, it's impacting animals. It's impacting, again, uh, a lot of a lot of people who aren't even benefiting from the plastic bags, mostly in the global south, uh, and it's just generally destroying our planet. Next in the transportation stage, to bring all of those plastic bags to the store, they need to be loaded up on trucks. That emits greenhouse gases. That makes, again, the roads more hot. That makes the roads more loud, and that generally pollutes our air. Consumption stage is going to step over because, again, that's the 20 minutes between you getting your groceries bagged and then you throwing away your plastic bag. We all are familiar with that. We've all used disposable plastic bags in the past. Uh, the next stage, we are recycling. So a lot of people are mis kind of have this misconception that when you recycle your plastic bags, they are created into brand new plastic bags. And that is, for the most part, um, pretty much false. Some materials, like aluminum and glass, can be recycled almost indefinitely. When you recycle 10 aluminum cans, it can be produced more or less into 10 uh, aluminum cans, and that can happen almost forever. Same with glass. With paper, you can recycle a piece of paper about six times before it re reaches the end of its usable life. And for plastic, that number goes down to about once. If you recycle 10 plastic bags properly at, you know, there are certain stores where you can drop them off, like Walmart, um, those become so low quality in the recycling process, they cannot even be turned into plastic bags. They have to be turned into inferior plastic products, like uh, carpeting, like fleece, like insulation. Uh, and after that, you know, those can't be recycled at all, and so that ends up in a landfill as well. Uh, a lot of people have pointed out so far, you cannot recycle plastic bags in curbside recycling in Pembroke or really anywhere. It clogs up the recycling machines, and it's part of the reason why China has stopped taking our recycling, because it's kind of clogging up. They're taking our recycling saying, well, none of this is recyclable, and a big part of that is plastic bags. Again, at a previous Board of Health meeting, even a member of the Board of Health thought that you could recycle plastic bags. And I'm not ragging on that person. 
Um, that's just a misconception that a lot of people in our town have. And that's not something that education is going to fix. We've been educating. It's printed on the lids of your recycle barrels. It's just something that we need to ban so people stop throwing them in the wrong bin. And the final one is disposal. So a lot of people pointed out when you put a plastic bag in a landfill, it can stay there for up to 1,000 years before it, it, it doesn't, people say before it biodegrades, before it decomposes, it doesn't biodegrade. It just breaks down to the point that we can't see it anymore and becomes microplastics. Those microplastics seep into our water table. Microplastics have been found in bottled water, in tap water. They've been found in the air, in indoor environments before. We're finding them pretty much anywhere to the point where you could go to the most remote streams on Earth where humans haven't even been, and there's a pretty good ch uh, chance that you'd find microplastics in them as well. As of right now, we don't know what the negative health impacts of microplastics are on human health. There hasn't been enough research done on it. I don't want to eat plastic. I think it's pretty safe to bet that even though there's no conclusive proof of it so far, consuming plastic is not good for our health as humans. Uh, it's definitely not good for wildlife. Uh, and then finally, one previous speaker did point out that in Pembroke, we incinerate our trash, and that's true. But when you incinerate a product, it doesn't completely disappear. That material still exists, and it exists in the form of greenhouse gases that are formed when you burn it. They go up into the atmosphere and accelerate global warming. It exists in the form of microplastics and toxins that are then released again into our water table that we end up consuming in the end. This is something that needs to be done, and I really believe that the members of the Board of Health have an ethical obligation to ban these. And we're not delusional here. We understand that banning plastic bags isn't the end-all be-all. Let me stop you for a second there. Uh, you know, the reason for this meeting tonight is to hear your concerns, but we've been approached to, to support meeting, to get it onto town meeting, but we are not, uh, it is not ethical, we're not obliged to pass this bylaw because we're the board, we're three, a, a board of three. We're here to listen to everybody and it should be debated throughout the town. How can you say that it's our job to to tomorrow say, come up and say, we think it should be burned, banned. Because you, that's what we elected you to do as residents. And I'm trying not to be disrespectful here, but at the same time, your job on the Board of Health is to decide right now, should we introduce this on town meeting floor or should we not? I really super appreciate that you guys are holding this meeting. I think that is awesome. You're still doing a lot better than 280 other communities. Um, and, and really, everyone here is super grateful you're doing that. What I'm saying is, I think, personally, I'm just a resident you guys have an ethical obligation to at least introduce this onto town meeting so that people can vote on it. Other boards of health have done it so yeah, far. Yeah, but you didn't say that. You said ethically we, we should be voting okay. on it my, to produce my mistake. it. So I'm trying to correct you okay. in the sense of that, you know, we're whole, you, as you just said, great, we're having this meeting. We believe that it should be put to the residents. Great. So it shouldn't be three of us say, well, we should ban plastic bags. There's obviously a debate here, so that's you, you need to be wary of that. Okay, I apologize. I misspoke. Thank you for calling me out on it. I misspoke. It's not a problem. You, you're very passionate. I'm just just correcting you. That's all. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Um, and then final thing, if this is brought on to town meeting floor, um, I just think one thing the Board of Health should be aware of, uh, please put some consideration to exactly how it's phrased. Because of the loose phrasing in a lot of other communities, um, certain grocery stores like Shaw's have come up with um, these things. This is a plastic bag that was specifically developed to kind of sneak through the ordinances. On the bottom it actually even says, I think this is an ordinance compliant, yeah, this is an ordinance compliant bag um, with a minimum thickness of three millimeters. So, you know, I would say this is somehow worse than just the regular plastic bags because they're thicker and they produce more waste. And so if the bill is going to be, if the whatever bylaw is going to be written, Please just make sure that it's at least like four millimeters so that way they can't get away with this because this is just worse than nothing. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for listening to me. Sorry for ranting. Peace out. No problem. Anyone else? Uh, Steve Walsh, I live in Brenda Lane. Uh, I drove up here tonight and, you know, out of everything I saw on the side of the road, I didn't see one plastic bag. As of just a couple of days ago, I saw two tires, an air conditioner, a big flat screen TV dumped on the side of the road, and the uh, Board of uh, Selectmen helped us out, picked that stuff up. But I just don't see this being a big problem here. One will be first. All the towns around us have supermarkets. And I'll tell you, the closest supermarket to me is Shaw's in Hanson. 
So I'm going to be in my plastic bags or gouts. The people who shop at Halifax, Walmart, are going to be getting their plastic bags or gouts. And so I don't know how much of this really works when you're the single one, other than just driving up the costs to the residents by the people increasing their costs on food, increasing their costs on beverages, to put it in that bag, where now they're paying one or two cents a bag. Some of these bags with the handles cost a dollar a bag. It just gets passed along. And the only one who's going to pay for it are the people in this town. It's one thing if it's a statewide ban and everybody has to do it. Somebody would come in with a bigger proposal for paper bags, biodegradable bags, something that they can use. And when the number one, there's nothing else around us. We're it. We take the hit. If this was such a big issue, the Board of Selectmen could take it up. Why don't they give everybody in the town some recycled bags? <coughs> take it out of our trash fund. Maybe it might help. Why don't we get some of the other things that are happening? Some of our bigger things out there that need to be recycled. Plastic bottles and things like that that are sitting on the side of the road. But there's no program to actually tell people what goes in those recyclable bins. And from what I heard the other day, it now costs us more to get rid of recyclables than it does to get rid of our trash. So it's, it's don't know how all this is. China isn't taking plastic. They were the biggest ones taking it. I think that's another issue. But I think it's, it could also be, I don't know, get some of the stores to sponsor some of these bags. Give them out. Maybe that would help. But these are just some suggestions. But I, I think being number one sets us back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Does anyone at the back want to speak? Feel free. Hello. Hi. Hi. Just uh, state your name and address, and then you can. Okay. Well, my name is Samantha Woods, and I'm the executive director for the North and South Rivers Watershed Association. Okay. So I do not live in Pembroke. Yeah, that's okay. Um, however, we have members who live in Pembroke. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have helped support this ban in Marshfield successfully. It also has been uh, done in Duxbury and uh, Plymouth. Um, so it's not the first one to be done in our area. Um, and I think uh, it's sort of sweeping the, the state, if you will. Um, the town of Hanover is considering it. Hull is considering it. Situate is considering it. Um, I haven't heard about Hanson or Halifax, but I suspect <coughs> that the more people do it, the more people will do it. And um, so I just wanted to let people here at the uh, town uh, know that the watershed is very concerned about plastic and the environment. Um, as has already been said, uh, it just doesn't go away. It becomes microplastics. I was just talking to some colleagues in the Taunton River watershed who um, recently did a trawl survey in their river uh, for microplastics and found that it, in every trawl survey that they did in the river, they found microplastics. Now, plastic bags are not the only source of plastic in the environment. Um, and clearly, there needs to be more done. Uh, but this is a step in the right direction. And we need to take that first step before we can take the next one, which would be perhaps straws or plastic bottles, the bane of my existence, with the little caps everywhere. And I do enough cleanups um, to tell you that, that those are real problems, too, that need to be addressed. But I do think it's also a mindset. And the plastic bag ban is part of getting us as a culture to understand that a way, there is no way, that plastic lasts forever. It, it will harm us, ultimately. And we pay for it one way or the other. Um, if you think that you're not paying for the plastic bag that you get when you buy something at Shaw's, you are sadly mistaken. That is being you know, transferred to you in many ways and in the environment. Um, if you have a reusable bag, uh, it can last for a year, two years, many more. You know, and we at the Watershed Association would be happy to give you some. Um, as I'm sure everybody who would like to market anything to you would be happy to do. So um, 
you know, don't think that we wouldn't support giving free bags to people to help them make that transition. Uh, we'd, ra we'd consider it a very good investment in our mission to protect our water here. So with that. Thank you. Anyone else feel they need to say anything? I brought these. Okay, my name is Pam Demosell, and I'm back again. Um, these I have, they were in the car, okay, because I take them to our local supermarket, and they have a bin that I put them in faithfully, okay, and that bin sometimes, it's this big around, okay, and that tall, and it's full most times, okay. Do they send it to the incinerator? I don't know. Right. Well, I, uh, I, you know, I'll keep taking any more. But if um, you know if nobody has anything more, I just want to, um, you know. Mr. Chairman, yes. To the floor. Um, not speaking for or against the items that have come up here tonight, I think that would be an appropriate as a town employee representing here tonight. But I do want to correct some factual inaccuracies that were made here tonight. Just so you know, I keep looking at my phone because I'm currently texting with Dave Nichols of EZ Disposal. He's the second in command of EZ Disposal. He's also our town liaison. Um, people seem to be under the impression our town trash goes to an incinerator. I don't know why they think that because the renegotiation of our town contract with EZ um, regarded to getting out of CMAS because of the extraordinarily high rates. Everyone remembers the skyrocketing trash bills because of the skyrocketing prices at CMAS. Our trash currently, and I confirmed with him just to make sure I hadn't misunderstood anything, our trash is going to the Taunton landfill, which means everything you throw away is actually going into a landfill, not being incinerated or anything else done with it. Uh, another piece of misinformation, as of the last information he had, that our tipping rates of recycling and trash are the same rate. That is not true. Our tipping rate on trash at the last count, and this is a fluctuating market, I want to be very clear that it's a fluctuating market, was $25 a ton tipping fee on recyclables and $75 a ton tipping fee on trash. Again, fluctuating market, but far, far and away from being the, the same price. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed it. So it's 25 and 75 but I don't know which is which. I'm oh, sorry, recycling is 25 oh, a ton. Thank you. Um, and that's also important that people remember recycling isn't free. Um, many people have alluded to the operations that go on. It is Avon that our recycling goes to. I did confirm that. Um, Recycling isn't free, unfortunately. There is a, a, a mechanical process and a cost, if you would, impacted in separating out recyclables and using them. So I don't want anyone to have that misconception on the other side that, oh, recycling is free because it's not. The reprocessing of anything has a cost associated with it, but no, it is not the cost of a tipping fee landfill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I could, uh, those numbers, and I don't know if they're fresh off the press, Yes. The, n the numbers that I heard very recently, so you yes. gave some statistics of $75 for non-recycling, $25. What I heard within the last week, and my, my source well, may be wrong, market, I heard well $57 versus $54. The recycling market is losing rapidly, I want to be clear on that. It is losing rapidly, but it's, it's still not equal. Have you heard differently, it's equal? I heard it's a difference of about $3. Okay. So fifty dollars versus three dollars is, is very different. So you make that point, but in regards to that, what is that saying? Is that saying so for the people in, for here and at home, and from even myself? So you, is that statistic saying that seventy-five percent of trash is versus twenty-five percent of recycle? It's just the tipping fee per ton, but again, per it's ton. a fluctuating market. Yeah. Um, everyone thinks it's a static market, and unfortunately, that's just not the case. Okay. Everyone's heard the news. Everyone watches the news. The China is the number one consumer of recyclable products as, as a raw form to be processed. And obviously, everyone's heard on the news all the problems in China. China's not making raw product in anymore, especially from this country like they used to. That impacts the market for second sale of recyclable goods. So yes, it could change that much in one week, and it has in the past. You're absolutely correct. OK. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to, Mr. Sullivan, when you first came up, you talked about, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, something to the effect of the science being irrefutable. So I'm not a scientist and I probably couldn't 
either say in favor or against some of the information that I heard this evening. It was all good. I've been actually on the Board of Health. This is my second term, and my first term on the Board, along with some folks that are to my left, we put out a survey to the town of Pembroke. We asked five questions of the town, and the first question was, would you support a ban on single-use plastic bags at retail locations in the town of Pembroke? We got about 700 respondents, and the percentage was 54% in favor of the ban, 46% not in favor. So that, that was a few years ago, and, and I get a sense, my own per personal feeling, and it's purely anecdotal, is the times are starting to change. So those numbers may not be reflective of what the, what the people of Pembroke feel right now. And I think that's one of the reasons why our chair, Mr. Newman, called this meeting. I think it's very important that we hear people, that people come out. And by the way, thank you coming out in mid-July. A lot of you could be home going out for ice cream. Yesterday was National Ice Cream Day. You could be swimming in the pool. So it, it's nice that it's nice that you guys came out and, and gave Absolutely. your heartfelt feelings. And, and I think this will go a long way in uh, helping the board make a decision what some of our next steps will be. Well, I was uh, was going to close the meeting, you know, at the end to let there's some important dates, uh, you know, for everybody out there. If, uh, Mr. Chairman, again, if you would give me the liberty. Yeah. What I recommend everyone does is all of our agendas and all of our information are posted online. Those of you that are not utilizing the town website, I can't urge you strongly enough. There is no information about this town that you can't find there, whether it's beach closures, counts of this, including and up to and including the Board of Health agenda and when these items will be taken up. Obviously, the, the chairman has to set, you know, talk to his fellow board members, talk to the staff here, set an agenda for the next meeting. But as soon as it's it's decided, it will be up there on the website for folks like you to view. And for those that are not computer savvy, don't ever hesitate to pick up the phone, 781-293-2718. We would love to talk to you at the Board of Health, answer any questions you have, or, or direct you as to the next steps or what might be occurring. Excellent. Well said. Would you like to say something before we close? Sure. Come on up. Good evening. I'm Dr. Yakabuchi, and I happen to be the director of a private nature park in Pembroke, 73 again Nature Park, so I'm very concerned about the environment, of course. But I'm also the director of a senior housing facility, and I oversee the recycling and the trash process. And the thing that drives me crazy is uh, people don't seem to be able to understand what's on the lid of the containers of your totes. So I would like to see you come up with a more easy to understand flyer. One of the big things they do is uh, they'll take their recyclables and they'll put it in a plastic bag and they'll bring it to the tote and they'll throw the whole thing in the plastic bag. So then I have to go in there and rip open the plastic bag to get the cans and the so forth out of there. So it would be helpful if you had some sort of educational flyer that was available for us to enhance people's understanding. The second thing I, I want to say is that personally, when I'm trying to bring in uh, 10 or 12 bags from the stop and shop, uh, it's really nice to use those plastic bags because I can get my hands around five of them at a time and carry them in. So it would be nice if whatever comes next would be just as convenient to use. But I certainly also understand that the plastics I mean, if I had my way, I would eliminate all plastics. They'd just be glass and metal containers because, as the other speaker pointed out, they're 100% recyclable forever. So why are we polluting our environment with plastic when it's not necessary? And the third thing I would have to say as an engineer is I can't believe somebody can't use chemistry today with our advanced knowledge and technologies to make something useful out of plastics. I mean, if you ask me for a quick suggestion off the top of my head knowing nothing, I'd say, what about the bumpers you see in a parking lot? They could be made out of almost anything. You melt down a bunch of plastic bags and you add a little this and that and you've got yourself a bumper or maybe a curbstone or maybe a park bench. I mean, I can't believe that plastic can't be reused in some constructive way. Thank you for your time. Thank I'm you, I'm so John. glad that you're doing this. It's really important. Thank you. And I'm very impressed by the knowledge that some people have contributed here. So I'm very Me too.
You know, I, I, I thank you. Thank you for your input. I, you know, I really believe in, you know, uh, this country and the ability to, you know, come together and discuss and debate. And uh, I felt very strongly about calling this forum in order to, because we all read the papers or we all talk and we see each other in the supermarket. There's so much. And it, it's so, it's just one of many issues. Um, but, you know, uh, and we felt it, as a board it was, it was important. And uh, I am glad to see the people here tonight. And I, I think it will, it only helps us even more. Um, and I, I would like to tell everybody that, uh, just to let you know that if by, you know, uh, our next meeting is, is, um, July 23rd at, um, 6, 6 p.m., uh, down here at the Board of Health. But if, uh, in regards to the plastic bags and the actual process, because we're speaking about how the debate is here, if, so, if, if we do not come up with a support, for to put this article, there is also, just to let you know, there is also ways to continue to work. And one of them is you can still do, citizens can get 100 signatures, and you can still bring it forth. And just to be mindful of that, uh, those dates, that the fall town meeting, uh, in order, the warrant opens August 6th and closes on August 17th. So if you would have to get signatures as a group or the people that are strong for it, if, we, if there isn't an article for, for this, you can gather signatures and, and have it for the fall town meeting. But be wary of that, but those particular dates. Um, and um, the fall special town meeting is, in, uh, is Tuesday, October 23rd. So again, as, as gathering information, I want you to make sure you have that so you know. So, yes.